In the last video we took a look at a reasonably large class data set and talked about how to really assess the quality of the data in that data set using some statistical tools. This time let's take a look at some graphical ways that we can do that. We can use graphs to visualize a lot of things and one of the things that we can visualize is uh, trends and data quality. Looking down at the same data set that I looked at before. These are our three reactions that uh, we were looking at the enthalpy for, reaction one, two, and three. Same data set that we started with before. I've got my statistical things at the bottom, but what if I really just want to look at how good this data is? You know, we can look up and down the list, but sometimes numbers are a little hard to follow that way. So let's take a look at some graphical approaches to it. First thing I did was made a graph where I was just looking at grams of sodium hydroxide and the delta H that was reported on the board. So let's take a look at that graph. Um, here it is. Three different reactions. Reaction 1, Reaction 2, Reaction 3. Uh, let's zoom in on each of those individually so that we can have a little better look. There's my Reaction 1 data. And again, all I've got is a graph where I've got grams of sodium hydroxide and enthalpy of reaction. And you see that it, it looks pretty consistent. It looks all the way across here as if the average of these points might be a pretty reasonable approximation of the data. If we had perfect data that was absolutely pristine and had no error in it, all of these points would be a perfectly horizontal line. I don't ever expect to see that. This is pretty good. We do have a couple points that, you know, these two points seem like they're a little high. This point seems like it's a little high. We've got a few that are clustered a little on the low side, but overall, that seems like a pretty reasonable data set. If we look at reaction two, well, that one is similar. Now, reaction two has a little bit more scatter in it, but remember, this is a pretty large number. So this number is two and a half times this number. So you would expect that the spread, the natural spread in the data might be a little bit bigger. And that's what we're seeing. Again, we've got a couple points that are a little bit high, but I would probably trust just looking at this, I would trust that the average would represent this data pretty well. How about reaction number three? Well, we've got one point that's a little high, we've got one point that's a little low, but they seem like they're pretty reasonable and the average should represent this data pretty well, but one of the things that I hope at least some of you noticed and thought about was, why do I have this graph formatted so horribly? Why do I have this huge white space over here in my graph? One of the things that we say about our graphs is the data should fill the available space. So this is a bad graph, unless you noticed this point sitting way over here. And that point is what just jumps out and says something is really wrong with this data. There's something happening that made this point deviate so much from the other points. This one deviates a little, this one deviates a little, but it's still at least in the neighborhood. This one, way out of the way. What's going on with that data point? And if you watch the other video, you may have noticed that, well, that happens to be the data point that we said is clearly wrong. There's something wrong with it. And you know, again, within the context of this experiment, I can look at this data point and I know that that's a wrong data point. It's not just one that had some strange little experimental error. That one is calculated incorrectly. So because of that, I can disregard that data point. We talked about doing that in the other video. This one, it's really something that we want to look at as just a way to visualize because looking at the data, eh, you might not really notice that that one seems way out of bounds, way out of bounds and way off base. Looking at the graph, it's pretty obvious that this data point is just so out there and something's really, really wrong, wrong with it. So when we calculate an average, we should be able to statistically eliminate this as a data point, but Again, because I know that it was done incorrectly, we can legitimately just uh, not consider that in our average. Another thing we can look at 
when we're looking at this particular data set, remember when we were looking at the data itself, I said that I sorted them by enthalpy. And that helps us look at the list. But what if we graph them in a sorted way? So same data, just graphed a little bit differently. Now instead of graphing them by the mass of sodium hydroxide that was used, I just graphed them in order of their rank. So you can see, again, for the blue down at uh, down at the low end, things deviate a little bit. At the high end, things deviate a little bit. But, whoa, there's a green point in there. Looking at reaction three, my green point, that didn't just deviate a little bit. That just jumped right off the chart. So there I can see that my uh, data point here is way out of line. Uh, very easily see that it's way out of line compared to the rest of the data. And again, this one looks like it's probably a little out of line as well, but that one is probably off because of some experimental error. Um, it's not just that it was calculated wrong. So we're going to leave that one in um, because we have no real good valid reason that we can point to for it being an incorrect value. And again, looking down at reaction two, uh, that's pretty good. You expect these to be sloped. Again, if this was perfect data with zero error, this would be a flat horizontal line, sorted. It looks like it's got a little bit of a slope to it, but it's not too bad. It seems like it, it's a pretty smooth uh, data set. That's just a couple ways of visualizing data graphically to look at, uh, look for outliers and look for the amount of error. If we're looking at it this way, the slope of this line actually gives us a measure of the error in the experiment or the variance in the experiment. So um, there are a lot of things we can do to look at error. Uh, these type of graphs are just some of the ways that we can consider both trends in the data and looking at points that just obviously end up lying far outside of where the rest of our data sits. All right, let's get back to work on these things.